Hello everyone, Mike with Hills and Haulers Homestead. I'm coming to you today and I'm going to ask a simple question. What is a prepper? Well, a prepper is a modern day term for a homesteader. A prepper is a modern day name for a previous way of life that people did. It was just the, the life they lived. They raised their own food in their gardens, most of their own food. They raised chickens in their backyard for both meat and eggs. Um, you know, they went to the store once a month, once every three months, once every six months, just for the staples, flour, sugar, salt type of thing. Um, everything else they raised in, 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 you know, produced on their own. Uh, they went to the local butcher who, you know, got his meat from local farmers. And now we're a global food, we're a global economy, we're a global supply chain that's failing left and right. And there's weekly food recalls for, you know, listeria and salmonella and E. coli. Uh, this week there's a, a recall on what, 250,000 pounds of ham and, and uh, uh, pepperoni for infection. So, you know, our, our current supply chain is broken. It is absolutely broken. And, and the, the global pandemic really brought to light the, the, the fragility of it, you know, how fragile it is and how un, undependable it truly is in the, in the event that something like this should happen, like a global pandemic. And today, you know, we wake up and we hear about, you know, the tornadoes that hit, you know, Western Kentucky and, uh, you know, parts of the Midwest and the South and stuff like that. I mean, Kentu Western Kentucky alone are looking at confirmed like 50 dead or expecting up to 75 to 100 more dead. And, you know, it, it's just, this isn't, this isn't a, a I told you so video. Uh, because, you know, the only thing I can do is just sit here and just pray for those people and their families and stuff like that. And, and that they, you know, the ones that are impacted by this, that do, you know, they do recover and everything and that they heal from their injuries and stuff. Um, but, you know, you look at it, you know, previous videos, I always said that, you know, weather related events are usually or more than likely going to be what we're going to face and what we're going to have to uh, depend on our preps for. And, you know, just very simple, like I said, a, a, a power outage or even a prolonged power outage or something like that. And just funny enough, I say that, so there's no power outage here because this is back up on the, on the farm. But you see that tree right there. That's about 18 inches, 18, 20 inches in diameter at about chest height. And uh, the wind broke that tree off. And it's not a dead tree. Um, so the wind just... Of course we're back up on a hill and it just it snapped that tree and put that near a power line that thing falls across the power line um and power's out now how long is it going to take you know, they're going to have to come out they're going to have to cut that tree off they're going to you know have to shut the power off to that feed cut that tree off get everything cleared up get up there repair the lines and you know they're going to be doing inclement weather it's raining and we got 40 45 mile an hour wind gusts here today and you know that's no fun to be out in in any situation let alone up in a, a bucket truck 50 feet in the air trying to repair a, a broken power line. So, you know, it, it's just things like that. And, I mean, these poor folks down there in, in western Kentucky and stuff, you know, they're looking at, at uh, long-term power outages, water's out. Uh, if there's natural gas in that area, I'm sure it's been shut off because of the amount of damage and everything. Um, so, you know, if these folks don't have any kind of backups for power or, you know, anything like that, they are now at the mercy of the government, you know, FEMA and Red Cross and maybe even the National Guard if they bring them in. But that's the thing. How long does that take? You know, so how long are they going to go without? If As long as their house is still standing, they have shelter, they can live on what, they, what little bit they may have in their homes. But if they're not prepped and prepared and they don't have good clean water stores on hand, they don't have good, uh, uh, you know, non-perishable food stores on hand, you know, they, they are at the mercy of the system. And that's what I, when I think of what's a prepper, and I, I'm going to tell you a prepper is somebody who is independent of the system. Um, we are self-sufficient. We are self-reliant to a degree right now. I mean, I'm not fully there. I want to be eventually, but I'm independent of that to where if something would happen, I'm not dependent on an agency, especially a bureaucratic government agency that, I, well, I'll not be nasty on here, but, you know, I'm, I'm, not, going to, I'm not going to be at their mercy. They're not going to, I'm not going to sit at home and wait for a designated time or a designated place where I can go pick up a box of food that might get my family through three days. Um, you know, I'm going to have it all here in my house and have it, you know, readily available. As long as my house is still standing and it's a safe structure to provide us shelter, that's where I'm going. 
I'm not going to be dependent on that. And you know what? That makes me and my family independent and keeps us safe. And that's that much more product or food or service that somebody else who is, is more in need than us can have. So, you know, we're not tinfoil hat wearers. We're not uh, conspiracy theorists. Uh, I don't trust the government. Never have trusted the government. You know, what was it Ronald Reagan said? The, the scariest words in the in the history of, of uh, the United States is we're from the government and we're here to help type of thing. You know, it, there, there's so much bureaucracy involved in that. And, and the logistics is just, it, it's not what, you, what they make it all out to be. I, believe me, I've been involved in it. It's not that great. Um, it is nice once they do to get there and get established, but then it, it tends to fall apart frequently. And it still does. So, you know, like I said, those, those things um, that people tend to, you know, they make fun of the preppers, they, oh, you're one of them people, you know, type of thing. No, I'm not one of those people. No, yeah, I am one of those people. I am one of those people that if something would happen, that I'm not going to be the one standing in line with you. And to me, the, the less dependent I am on the system, the better off we're going to be because... Like I said, I, we are not at the mercy of bureaucrats and irresponsible people who can't, you know, who one meeting produces more meetings, produces more meetings, produces committees for more meetings, and, and that's how it goes. That's, that's the government for you. But, you know, like I said, uh, our thoughts and prayers uh, from the Hills and Holler Homestead are for the people in Kentucky uh, and the other states that were affected by the tornadoes. They said one of the 28 tornadoes, they think it actually traveled a total of 200 miles on the ground and just widespread devastation for those entire 200 miles. And, and that's, that's unprecedented. I mean, it truly is. Um, you know, and like I said, we're getting into that season here where we've not really had a lot of cold. We've had one, one good freeze snap, you know, the other day when it snowed and it was 21 degrees, but uh, the ground never fully froze. And now it's warm. It's 60 degrees yesterday. It was 70 earlier today. And it's raining, and we got higher winds. So you know, uproot a tree, soft, soft wet ground, wind blowing, uproot a tree, knock it over some power lines, you know, anything like that. And, and you've got an outage, and you've got an outage for eight, ten, twelve hours, maybe even twenty-four hours, depending on where it is and when, to what degree of uh, damage is done. Um, and with continued inclement weather of forty-five mile an hour wind gusts and rain and stuff like that, it's you know, you can't expect you know the knights in shining armor to come riding in and that's why you know as i've gotten on into my upper years of 50 years old and have kids and stuff like that you know 15 years ago i, I really didn't think much about prepping honest to goodness i never really thought much about it but it was with my years in healthcare and dealing with the public and in emergency medical services and even in the military with uh, you know disaster response <clears throat> it wasn't that I felt immune to that kind of stuff. It was just that I always felt like I would be ready for it if it would ever happen to me. And when I got kids and then the global pandemic hit, that was one of those things that smacked me upside the head and say, hey, buddy, you are not ready and you need to be ready. Um, so that, that, that was my, my motivation right there. That was my driving force to, to get my family prepared and be prepared. And, um, you know, you, you say what you will, you call it what you will. Uh, you know, there's no conspiracy theorists in, in my head. You know, truth is stranger than fiction. So you take it, you know, for what you want it there. But, you know, we have food stores on, on hand. We have uh, a, a certain degree of water. Uh, short, everything short of a nuclear attack, I mean, I can pretty much go right out here and, and get all the water that we need, and I can filter it, sterilize it, and, and, and uh, uh, you know, sanitize it for drinking and cooking and everything like that. So, you know, that's, again, what is a prepper? someone who cares about their family, someone who wishes to remain independent and self-reliant and self-sufficient and is not at the mercy of um, proven organizations that uh, logistically fail frequently. So that's it today, guys. I just wanted to kind of put that out there. Like I said, I'm not trying to take advantage of the situation of what happened, but it is a good, good place to start and say, look, you know, this is the reality of it. It, it. it can and it will happen. And, you know, that's not to say that a tornado couldn't come across the hill here now. Uh, it's been known to do it before. It's not as frequent, you know what I mean? But still, it's something that even with that, if uh, a tree falls across the power line or whatever, you know, 
you know, there's widespread damage somewhere to the electrical grid. Other things are going to fail in, in the, you know, the aftermath of that. So just good preps, guys. That's, that's all I can say is, you know, have your good food stores on hand. Three months minimum, three months minimum. Uh, a gallon and a half of water per person in the house per day, and that gives you a little extra surplus that, you know, use the available space in your home, get good dry stores, get good shelf-stable stuff, and, you know, have backups for your backups. And all I can say then is, uh, for now, is God bless and you know, like I said, our thoughts and prayers are with those folks that are affected by these storms. And, um, you know, please, uh, and I hate to pander here, but just because of the algorithms on YouTube, give us a like, leave us a comment, tell us what you think. Subscribe to our channel if this is the kind of stuff that, you know, interests you and you, and you like the lifestyle and uh, or like-minded folks. That's what we're going to put out here and um, try to continue on to encourage people to be prepared. Thank you, guys. God bless. Take care.